Let's do it. It is the Dolphins mailbag. Ask anything. No questions are off limit. I'm your host, Jake Friedma, and I'm pumped to be with you on Dolphins today. So go ahead and smash that like button to like this video. If you want the Dolphins to beat the Chiefs, it's an AFC showdown. AFC East versus AFC West, 6-2 and two versus 6-2. and two. The best record in the AFC on the line on Sunday. And oh yeah, the game's being played in Germany. How about that? It's the Miami Dolphins versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Let me know if you want the Dolphins to win by liking this video. Do it now. Smash that like button. First question on our Ask Anything mailbag, Fins Up. Love the name, by the way. Fins Up all the way. Well, I don't feel good about our old line because people are really going to be proud of beating bad teams. Our line is horrible with a top 10 defense. It's the truth. I'm nowhere near satisfied with the O-line. Listen, this is, uh, I know it's a mailbag, so there's not a lot of dialogue here, but fins up. I would ask you, what would you be satisfied with if you're not satisfied with the NFL's top scoring offense, top rushing offense, top passing offense, and the fact that they have held to a, or kept to a upright and clean for the majority of the season. They have some of the best Pro football focus blocking grades and passing block, pass blocking grades as well. And yes, the d offensive line has been beat up. Armstead's on IR, wins on IR. Connor Williams has missed the last two games. Rob Jones left the game. Austin Jackson has pretty much been the only guy that hasn't missed a lot of time. And there were some penalties in that game against the Eagles. Lester Cotton had a couple of bad penalties, but he was much, much better against New England. And so. Have they been perfect? Well, they've been damn close. So even though they've been bad in the two losses, I think the narrative there remains to be seen, and a lot of people are pushing that narrative that the Dolphins can't beat good teams. And maybe they are correct, but two games, two losses on the season, and both of those losses you're not going to put completely on the offensive line. And you know what? If a team goes undefeated, 17-0, a perfect record, then, yeah, you could say, wow, this offense line was good. But two losses doesn't mean I'm ready to just put all the blame on the offensive line. In fact, I will defend them that they have overachieved to this point in this season, especially when you consider where that offensive line was a year ago. It was the Achilles heel of this team. They couldn't protect Tua. Obviously, he had his fair share of injuries because the offensive line was unable to protect him. And knock on wood, his health, Tua, that is, has been tremendous because the offensive line has protected him. And yes, the offensive line has taken a beating and there's been some moving parts. They started or they played over 20 guys on the offensive line. That's going to happen in the NFL. But for what they've gone through, the adversity they've faced, they've weathered the storm, and I think they've been actually an asset of this team, and specifically the offense, as opposed to a detriment. Tristan Ruiz, what's up, my guy? Said is David Long. Okay, yeah, David Long fought some uh, in, some of the injury bug in that game against the Patriots. And Wednesday is where you'll hear Mike McDaniel talk about the injury report, give a little update on who's practiced, who's not. And I'm not sure if the Dolphins are sticking to the exact same tr uh, typical schedule with the game being played in Germany, but I think we'll know a lot more in terms of who's planning to play on Wednesday or on Sunday. On Wednesday, we'll get that injury report and we'll take a look and see whether or not David Long is okay. But he's not facing any kind of serious season-ending injury but I do hope that he'll be able to play on Sunday against the Chiefs. Speaking of Sunday against the Chiefs, I got to ask you, who do you got? Type D for Dolphins or C for Chiefs in this intense AFC showdown. It's going to be great in Germany. Let's see. We've got more questions to get to. This is from M. Miller 916 What will our record be at the end of the season. I love it. Look into the crystal ball a little bit. Let's get crazy with a prediction. And at 6-2 and two right now, you got the Chiefs game. You got the Cowboys. I should have the schedule memorized. You're going to play the Bills the last week of the season. You still got the Jets twice. And I believe there's a lot of wins stacking up for the Miami Dolphins. So I'm going to go ahead and say 13-4. and four with a first round bye. There you go. 13 and 4 is my prediction for how this Dolphins team will end up. And really, 
That's almost to stay pay, stay on pace with the 6-2 and two start. Because we're not quite at the halfway point. Remember, the NFL now plays 17 games instead of the 16. And so eight games in the book with nine more to go, including that bye week and time for the Dolphins to get even more healthy and get Devon Chan back as he continues his pursuit of the Offensive Rookie of the Year. Part of our pursuit includes prize picks because I love prize picks. They're a proud presenting sponsor of today's Dolphins Today show, and we thank them for their support of the show. And what's awesome about prize picks is we've got a special deal for you, a $100 deposit match when you go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. But first, I got to tell you how to play. It's really easy. If I can do it, anybody can do it because prize picks provides a library of projected stats on a number of different games, not just football either. They've got NBA stuff rolling out, World Series still going on. You can get in on any kind of prize pick you want, and you simply pick more or less of a player's projected stat line. And tons of different options out there. I know a couple of weeks ago, the Tyree kill more or less of scoring a touchdown was at 0.5, and I smashed that more, and of course, he scored more. So you got to combine two or more picks on your prize picks for your final card, and you're picking more or less. So this week, going with more on Tua Tungavello's projected passing yards at 286.5 and less on Patrick Mahomes' passing yards at 295.5. So counting on the Dolphins' defense to slow down Mahomes, and I can always count on Tua Tungavello to pass for more than his projected total. So that's how it works. And you too can get started at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. That's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. The most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. We've got a $100 deposit match for you. And all you got to do is go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And because we love you and we care about you, we'll put that link in the description as well. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS for a $100 deposit match. Jackson loves the Miami Dolphins. Jack Lauderay, Jake Ritmo, we both love the Miami Dolphins as well. Do you think DJ Fluker will ever be coming to Miami? I, it's hard to, now that the trade deadline has passed, it's hard to foresee a scenario in which that happens. So I'm just going to go, unfortunately, it's kind of a short answer. I wish I had more. Uh, it's, it's a yes or no question, but I, I really don't see it happening. I think he's satisfied in the spot now. And for the Dolphins, I just don't think that's a move that you make. Anthony Manzano, MOB, says, do you think the Dolphins have too much faith in what they got? That's why they have Dan Pat during the deadline. I don't think it's too much faith. I think it's the appropriate amount of faith because it's not like they ignored the roster once the season began. They did make a trade to bring in Chase Claypool, and I think he can add another wrinkle to the offense. Now, granted, that trade was done several weeks ago before the trade deadline, and he had his first catch in a Dolphins uniform on Sunday against the Patriots, and I like what he brings to the offense. So I think Chris Greer in the front office looked at this roster long and hard and thought, okay, We've got a lot of people out right now, and none of them seem to be season-ending injuries. They're coming back, so you count on that. This is already a team that's in pretty good position as far as depth and a team that doesn't have its full arsenal of grab capital moving forward, meaning they don't have those third and fourth-round picks, so they wanted to hold on to the draft picks that they do. And so I think all of those factors contributed to Chris Greer and the Dolphins staying put at the deadline. Mark Smith, X has no trade value, old and pricey. He will get cut post June 1st next season. I, he is, I, I mean, old has such negative connotation. I won't say he's old. He's been in this league a while. And if this groin injury continues to persist, he had the groin injury last year. I get the point that you're trying to make. He is a player that yields a high paycheck and has quite the hit on the salary cap space, but the production has been there. Before he got injured, he had a couple of big interceptions. He's led the NFL in interceptions before. 
And I think when you combine him with Jalen Ramsey, Xavier Howard and Jalen Ramsey are two premier cornerbacks. Obviously, Jalen Ramsey, you could make the case as the best cornerback in the NFL, and Xavier Howard, a nice complimentary piece for Vic Fangio. So I disagree on Xavier Howard getting cut, but you know what? We'll have that conversation in June. And if it does come into fruition, then Mark, I will tell you, you were right and I was wrong. And how about this? We are so close to our goal. Maybe it will happen live while we're on this mailbag, but we just need one more subscriber to get to 48.5. And then our next goal is 49K, which I believe we can make happen sooner rather than later. But help us get to 48.5 first. We've only got one more subscriber to get there. So if you're watching now and you haven't subscribed, do so now. Smash that subscribe button. And you can do so as well at youtube.com slash Dolphins News. Sherry May has the question, is Connor going to be activated for Sunday? I believe he will be. Connor being Connor Williams. He's missed the last two games. But reports are he was close to playing in both those games. And so based on that direction of the progression, I would venture to say that he will be available on Sunday. But again, just like the last injury question with David Long, we'll have a much, much better idea later on in the week as we get closer to kickoff. So I hope he'll be there because the Dolphins could certainly use him. He's been excellent at center all season long. And when he hasn't been in the lineup, the Dolphins surely have missed him. I want you to be honest with me and let me know, did the Dolphins need to make a trade at the deadline? Type Y for yes or N for no. I don't think they necessarily did. I'm happy with where this Dolphins roster is. You think Tua will win the MVP? I do. I think Tua is in the driver's seat for the most valuable player in the National Football League. And just like in my record prediction, I think this Dolphins team has some wins on the calendar in front of them. And coupled with those winning opportunities are chances for Tua to, I don't want to say pad the stats, but break out, continue to play the way that he has. Because this offense that Mike McDaniels and Frank Smith, the offensive coordinator, have been able to utilize is an offense that puts players of skill in positions and space to be successful. We see it time and time again with Tyreek Hill. Jalen Waddle just had his best game of the season in over 120 yards receiving and the one touchdown. Raheem Moster continues to get it done. You're going to get Devon Achan back after the bye week, and those are all weapons that can continue to help this Dolphins offense, continue to help Tua, and as this team continues to win, I think the offense will be a driving force behind that, and that means Tua is a driving force behind the offense and capable of winning the MVP. You could also start to make the case for Tyreek Hill because he potentially could become the NFL's first ever 2,000-yard receiver in one season, and if he does that, maybe Tyreek Hill becomes your NFL MVP. A great question. I think it happens. Woo! From Rackus, we are absolutely loaded. We sure need depth, but we are good. So not a question in there, but I completely agree. We're loaded. We're getting a lot healthier as the season goes along. We're going to get some guys back from some of those early injuries. And if the 6-2 and two record is any indication of what's to come, I'm excited about the direction of this team. And you got a couple of prove-it games there on the calendar, most notably coming right up. That game against the Chiefs in Germany with first place in the AFC on the line. Two 6-2 and two teams going at it, and I can't wait for that one. So let me know in the comments who you got. I want you to type D for Dolphins or C for Chiefs. You know I'm taking the Dolphins, and we will continue to get you ready for that game all week long on Dolphins Today. That's why you subscribe, youtube.com slash Dolphins News. And we will welcome you with open arms with Daily Dolphins content, live shows, and of course, live watch parties for every Dolphins game. And that's why you subscribe. So thanks, everybody, for your questions today. Love you guys. Love Dolphins and love Dolphins today. Stay with us as we continue to get you ready for Dolphins Chiefs on Sunday on Dolphins Today. 